Which rebreather has the most kilometers of exploration under its lungs? AP Inspiration. Good guess, but no cigar. Hello, everyone. We are back once again with the rock star over to my side, Mr. Michael Manduno <laughs> from In Depth Mag from In Depth Newsletter, our In Depth Blog. We are going to be discussing for the YouTube channel uh, some great stories, little teasers, just so as we don't give away the whole thing. You can find all the full stories at In Depth Blog when they release this coming Thursday. Um, but we're just going to give you some teasers for now. If you do like this video, please be sure to hit that like button. If you want to hear the answers to some of these amazing questions that Michael's going to be asking, stay tuned. Michael, what have you got for me today? So, Nico, uh, can you guess which rebreather has the most kilometers of exploration under its lungs? I, I, I know this one. AP Inspiration. Good guess, but no cigar. Uh, Another? The Kiss? The Kiss? Uh, good. Both of these are have been around for a while, but no, it's not It's not The Kiss. And I'll tell you, it's not GUE's JJCCR either. Yeah, that was going to be my next guess. Uh, let's go with, okay, they made a movie about it, The Meg. <laughs> the Megalodon. It's not The Meg either. Interestingly, it's, it's not even a closed circuit rebreather. It's the Halcyon RB80 Passive Edition semi-closed rebreather uh it yep yep it uh, goes back to the late 90s uh the late 1990s uh this was developed by uh dr bukali in uh, europe and adopted by the wkpp and it's uh, really had a, a tremendous uh exploration record uh, we estimate about 160 kilometers of exploration new cave passage has been done on this rebreather. about 100 miles for you imperialists and uh quite remarkable so this story goes into it until now it's been a fairly small group of users a couple hundred uh, GUE users who've been trained on the unit and now they've uh, developed a semi a side mount version the RBK which is not only being used extensively in Mexico by Sindac and others but uh, some of the other groups are now using it as a bailout rebreather such as uh, karst underwater research really interesting amazing all right, Michael, I know you've got more for me. Hit me. What else you got? We got adventure. Adventure in this issue. Uh, two really cool stories. Me, One, the life and times of a West Coast photogrammetrist. <laughs> this is a story about Case Leverands and uh, some exploration. They were doing photogrammatic imaging of a mystery shipwreck in the Red Sea called the uh, uh, Alamorante Barossa. That's what they believe. One. I know Do this you know one. This truck, yeah. I know this one. Case, help me out on this one. If you guys want to go and watch a little bit of footage on the Amaranta Barroso, the top 10 video of the Red Sea Rex is above. We featured it in there. Cool. Put a link on it. Yeah. So he talks about some of the challenges of grabbing these images from a wreck that's at uh, 75 meters under the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. So we got a second pretty fun adventure story. Uh, one of our regular writers, uh, Andrea Murdoch Alpini, our Italian explorer and uh, romantic explorer, I should say. So he, uh, you know, they're in lockdown in Italy. He was just, you know, getting fed up to the max. And he decided to take social distancing to the extreme and go on a road trip in his cave van to drive over to Slovenia and do some uh, solo Slovenian cave diving and video the whole thing. Now, I must say that GUE does not sanction solo diving, as you know, and others don't as well. However, uh, this was something that uh, Andrea did and documented and talked about. So really fun story. Okay, awesome. Well, it's self-adventure and adventure. You, you take what you can in COVID times. But side note, I will repeat, we do not condone solo cave diving at Global Underwater Explorers. Just making that clear. Exactly. Keep us out of trouble here. <laughs> So, you'll remember, um, about a couple issues ago, we ran a really interesting story about some new models that look at uh, pulmonary oxygen toxicity. This is a uh, pulmonary toxicity is from long-term exposure to hyperbaric oxygen. Your lungs kind of get fried, uh, have problems, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, we read, there's a couple new models, uh, one by uh, Ran Arelli, 
uh, an Israeli researcher who's developed a new model to predict the onslaught yep. of uh, pulmonary tox, as well as Barbara Shrykoff from the U.S. Navy. So we thought it would be interesting to take these models and apply them to some actual dives. We have our, our great science writer, Riley Fogarty, doing this. So we pulled out two big dives to look at. Uh, one, um, Massimo uh, Badoni's uh, dive on the SS Brandenburg, a dive yep. to about 195 meters, 15, 20 minutes bottom time, and then about seven hours of decompression. So that was big dive number one. Big dive number two, a little shallower, um, Andy Pitkin with Kerr at Wikiwachi Springs, 124 meter dive, about a two hour bottom time, followed by about 10 hours of decompression. So uh, we use these to use the calculations of the model to predict, are these guys gonna get some pulmonary oxygen? talks or what yeah i love the way how in uh, in uh, in this community 124 meters is considered shallow <laughs> right. yeah anyway it's all, do it's all relative much, it wouldn't be an in-depth issue if you didn't have some opinion pieces for me a tech diver with an opinion exactly how how unique is that yeah right so who would have uh, thought, we, who would have thought? We have two two pieces actually really interesting this time. Um, we have Mark Powell, who you may know, he's a TDI instructor examiner, longtime tech instructor, and the author of Deco for Divers, which is a big standard in the in, in the community on um, decompression theory. So he wrote a piece, uh, really interesting, training, practice, experience, and judgment, and kind of looking at the the combination. You know, do you always need training? Can you, you got a new DPV? Is it really worth taking a course for? Or can you just learn to do it, learn from your friend, etc.? So he talks about this um, qu quite interesting piece. And then we have a special treat. Um, you know, it's really hard to objectively compare and contrast uh, technical training between agencies. And agencies, you know, they're not real enthused about having people contrasting. Uh, and, you know, a lot of it comes down to the instructor as well. So. It turns out uh, a former instructor of mine, a cave instructor, Chris Brock, who's uh, with the NSS CDS, the cave diving section. He's a cave diving instructor and uh, et cetera on the training committee. He ended up taking uh, cave one, GUE's cave one and cave two class. Right. The circumstances were a little unique. Uh, he was assisting one of our uh, great instructors, Meredith Tangway, um, who was taking her instructor exam for cave two so she needed some you know in the in the midst of pandemic here you got to make sure the class isn't going to cancel at the last minute because otherwise she's out her ie so um she uh chris was on standby to be able to come into her cave two class and take it if needed and sure enough a couple days before the class she had a cancellation and so chris uh went in so you can imagine i was very excited to get his view of you know a perspective on our cave one and cave two class Yep, from an informed, definitely. knowledgeable person. So that, it's a really interesting piece. Most definitely. That well, that's uh, you've got one last thing which uh, I've seen a snippet of that I quite like the look of. Um, something, something zen. I got two things for you. Two things. So we're in the middle of a global pandemic. The industry is suffering. There's no travel. Dive stores are really finding a hard time to to make do. Right. Uh, though people are doing some local diving. So. Who in their right mind would open a dive center in the middle of a global pandemic? A tech diver. <laughs> a tech, more than that, a GOE trimix breeding tech instructor and divers. Uh, three of them, actually a trio. And they've opened, I uh, guess, wait for the name. Uh, what do you think they call their dive center? Zen, the Zen Diving Company, per perfect for our crazy times. So uh, this is in Southern California. And so we kind of go in and talk to them and uh, and look at the new dive center and all. It's pretty interesting. And they're, they're doing some really innovative things. So uh, we have a piece on that. And last, uh, we have some sponsored content uh, from one of our great sponsors, DiveSoft. And it's a white paper really on fault tolerant rebreathers. You know, basically DiveSoft has two completely independent sets of electronics running in parallel, talking to each other. So if you lose a solenoid, you lose cells, you lose your computer, there's another one right working right there to take it. So you can lose basically a whole rebreather, you know, short of losing your loop or something like that. And you have a backup right there. So uh, it's quite innovative. I think they're certainly one of the most 
you know, more innovative uh, rebreather companies on the planet. So uh, that's in the issue too. I think it'll be pretty good. So we are talking solo cave diving. We are talking rebreathers. We are talking opening up of new dive centers. We are talking five feet of fury with Meredith Thangway. We're talking <laughs> the rebreather that's had the longest exploration mileage. We're talking lots of stuff. Guys, basically, this is just a tiny snippet. You guys all said to us, we want the episodes with Michael Manduno to be shorter, to be tighter. Guess what? Weird thing, we do listen. So here's your episode it's shorter it's literally 50 percent shorter than it normally is i'm going to wrap this up so we don't actually blow that out the water but michael thank you for taking your time to speak to us as always if you yep. do want to read the new issue of in-depth michael when is it out where can people find it it'll be out this thursday february 4th go to in-depth.blog come and subscribe and then we'll push the uh, new stories out to you via email it's free and uh, painless and uh, deliver maximum geek that's the one, guys. Delivering Maximum Geek. I love that. So, as always, if you like the video, please hit the like button. Share the video. Hit the subscribe button. Do follow us on all socials. Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. We're everywhere. Global Underwater Explorers. I'm Nico Luro from YouTube, and I will see you guys very soon. Michael, thank you so much. Booyah! Booyah! <laughs> <laughs>